Hi and welcome to the second video, the second lesson here. Today we're going to talk about sensitive people and being an empath. An empath is something you may have heard of or if you haven't it's basically somebody who is very sensitive to their environment and feels things. For example, you could um, have a very strong intuition and you can pick up on the way people are feeling. That sort of describes in the last video where we talked about guilt and other people mirroring and projecting their stuff. You're picking up on other people's energy, but what we have been doing is taking it on as our own. That is just the quality of an empath, is just to pick up the energy. Sometimes empaths can um, know what other people are going to do before they do it. They know other people's intentions. Mothers are a great one for that. So that intuition of knowing what kids are going to do. <laughs> if you're a mother, you know you're an empath. Um, so understanding that that is a quality of an empath as well. The other thing that empaths feel is other people's pain. So that could explain if you all of a sudden get a pain on your side and you, you don't know where it's coming from or what it is. And I'm not talking about indigestion <laughs> or eating too much. I'm talking about you just picking up on other people's pain. I used to suffer from that one quite a bit when I was, um, I used to do uh, like healing Deep, deep tissue work and massage and somebody a client would come in and sometimes before they'd come in I would feel their pain I'd get like a pain in my rib cage and I didn't know why and then the person would come in and they'd say oh I've got a pain in my rib cage I'm thinking, oh, okay why so that was um, me starting to understand that I could pick up on other people's pain as well another quality of an empath and of course the one we've been discussing from the very beginning from video one is an empath having the ability to take on other people's pain feelings and emotions and take them on as their own another quality of an empath is anybody who's uh, s suffered any deep depression or has a chronic fatigue syndrome. Now I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me, but a lot of empaths tend to suffer from the chronic fatigue syndrome. There's facts about it, you can look it up on the net, um, but that is a quality of that heightened sensitivity where it just drains them, it completely drains them, and they're taking on way, way, way too much, so they, it, their body is physically depleted. And most empaths are quiet achievers go about your business just do what you have to do stay under the radar quiet achievers because the, the level of sensitivity that they feel is quite high that they can't actually it just doesn't feel right to to go out there some empaths also need a quieter space and need like prefer to be at home or alone to recharge their batteries to recharge their engine because they feel everything out on the street um, like some people don't like going to big shopping centers that's me I just feel everything when I go to big shopping centers so if you have those qualities that is the qualities of and the characteristics of an empath at any point you can go back and, and check over the qualities of an empath and start to record which ones you kind of resonate with which, which ones describe you it could be just one it could be a few or it could be all of them so you just check in with yourself just to, to gauge where you're at with um, your understanding of your empath, empath quality. So breaking down the qualities of an empath is um, going to be quite important for you to deconstruct what is happening in relationships where you're taking on too much stuff. You can start to check in now and see if the stuff that's coming at you that you're feeling is yours or somebody else's and I'm going to show you now how you can do that. So if you're in the middle of a situation and you can feel suddenly angry um, or suddenly, I'm going to use the example that I was using with my boyfriend so you can watch me deconstruct the story and you can do the same to yours. So suddenly feeling guilty. Um, what I could do now with my knowledge is to go in and see is there anything that I'm feeling guilty about check in with myself have I done something to feel guilty about 
if the answer is no, then you can see that it's somebody else's feeling and give them that warmth, that compassion that I taught you in the first video. And then it's cut. So that connection um, of taking on too much is cut and you're suddenly protected because it's not firing at you anymore. The person can still feel guilty, but I'm kind of in this bubble of protection um, because it's not my feeling. And so that is a form of protection where you're taking that your own responsibility for checking in with yourself. Now, if you do have triggers, there might be situations where you do have triggers and you check in with yourself, is there something I'm feeling guilty about? Oh yeah, well actually I did blah blah and blah blah, so I feel guilty. Then um, then you can start to, not at, the mo at that moment, but to take responsibility for that and reflect on it and try to work out ways to, to clear that for yourself. And that way you're not projecting your guilt onto somebody else that they're not, they'll, they might feel it or they may not, depending if they're an empath or not. But what I want to say is we start to take responsibility by checking in. If it's mine, I deal with it. If it's not, I allow somebody else the space to deal with it and just send them love. So looking at empath in a really deep and deconstructing the things that make up an empath is really, really important because then you can start to give yourself um, a different layer of protection by having compassion. Compassion is your protection because you are aware of what the truth is, the truth in yourself, in the situation. So that compassion is really important. Now I say the word compassion but you really need to feel that and develop your own compassion. Some of you may find that easy to do but if you were anything like I used to be when I first heard the word compassion it was easy for me to give other people compassion because I'm a helper, I like to help people, that's my instinct. I like people to be happy, I like to see people grow and flourish and, and all of that. So it's easy for me to give compassion to others. Um, but it wasn't easy for me for a while to give compassion to myself. So I just want to give you a tool to help you develop your own compassion if you find it difficult. So this is a tool that my teacher gave me that I'm sharing with you. It would be to think, oh, okay, so when would I need to give myself compassion would be, say if I'm firing my anger at someone. All right, I'm going to give you a situation <laughs> that you might be able to relate to. All right, so anger. Arr, so I'm really angry. I'm firing my anger out. Um, I'm going to think of one of my triggers in the past. One of my triggers in the past was, why do I always have to clean the shower? <laughs> no one else cleans the shower. Everybody has a shower. Nobody else has cleaned the shower. Can you hear the anger in my voice? I'm projecting it out there and I'm firing it out because I feel the pain of always having to be like the slave that cleans the shower. You know, everybody else is using it. Anyway, I won't go on. But so when I had to learn from my teacher helping me to give compassion to myself, I had to think of how horrible it felt to be angry. I had to think of how painful it was to be angry. It does things to your body to be angry and to fire it out there. Now, you know, I didn't have to clean the shower. It wasn't my job. I'm not the doormat to clean the shower all the time. But there were other ways that I could approach it. But I used to just hook into my anger and, and fire at everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's coming. <laughs> Quick, get out of the way. <laughs> so, um, so the way that I would work with my anger is to give myself compassion for being angry. And I couldn't do it. It was really hard. I just wanted to be angry. It was just that fiery passion of being angry. So I had to work on it a lot. And the one thing that really triggered me to change and to soften me was to give myself compassion as myself as a child so when you see yourself as a child and you look at a little kid who's really angry and fire and they cry and you know they have a tantrum and um you know there's a lot of pain in that child so you can give that easily give that child compassion so when you visualize yourself as that child that's when you can give birth to your compassion to your compassionate self 
Um, an easy way to start is not probably with anger, but with sadness. When you see a sad child that just needs to be held, that just needs to be loved. Um, I guess in a way, um, me feeling angry about people not cleaning the shower was a hurt little child who felt wrong by and who felt it was taken advantage of and life was just not fair, you know, if I'm the only one cleaning the shower. So I started to give myself compassion as a child. So holding that child and giving warmth to that child. And then eventually you can work through um, giving yourself compassion as an adult as well. So what I'm going to include in this lesson is a meditation that I have done when I that I did when I was learning to give myself compassion and it's um, contacting the inner child in you. So I want to give that to you um, so that in case you have difficulty finding a true authentic place of giving yourself compassion which is really if I were to describe the place of giving myself compassion it's really quiet, it's gentle, it's warm, it's loving it's like the energy of a, a loving, unconditional mother. That's what you f compassion feels like to me. So we've come to the end of the second lesson about sensitivity and about being an empath. And I want to let you know that tomorrow I'll be sending you the third lesson. And the third lesson is about how to deal with those really, really challenging situations of negativity um, and finding some solutions to them. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.